everyone, it's Surgery Squad. Uh, <laughs> I'll just say, it's Mubonic Zombie, and welcome back to Surgery Squad. Yes, it's still Surgery Squad. I got my words mixed up there. Sorry. Uh, my brain is, is, uh, still going everywhere from, from doing the Cataracts episode that, um, which was the last episode. So this one, we are working with what is called adenoids. I'm not sure what these are, but apparently they're located in the back of your throat. So we'll find out when we get to this procedure. I have a feeling I will not feel good about this. Hello, and welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Adenoidectomy. I'm Dr. Susie, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. Our adenoids are located at the back of the throat, just below where the nose connects, also known as the pharyngeal tonsil. They are part of our immune system because they protect us from the bacteria or viruses that might enter the body when we breathe or swallow. Oh, okay. They are more important for children than adults, and they shrink as we get older. In some adults, they become inflamed, Oh. which can lead to infections, sleep apnea, better known as snoring, and ear infections, since enlarged adenoids might block the eustachian tubes, which drain fluid from the ears into the throat. Normally, these symptoms can be treated with antibiotics, but when these infections occur more frequently, we perform an adenoidectomy to remove them. Having an adenoidectomy, if it is required, can reduce the number of ear infections, reduce recurring chances of sinusitis, and can alleviate sleep apnea. However, there's a risk of developing an infection at the removal site. Plus, the procedure might not alleviate all the problems associated with adenoids. For instance, if ear infections continue, the problem might be elsewhere. Our patient today experiences sleep apnea and ear infections. Let's scrub in and get to work. We'll need to use a general anesthetic for our patient. Why don't you help out? Can you find a suitable vein in the patient's hand? Sure. Okay, so the little thing that popped up that said, um, adenoids were first coined in 1839 to mean gland-like. So I like that it have those little hints of uh, bits of information within the game. Okay. Looks good to me. Sterilize the injection area using a sterile alcohol wipe. No. Insert the needle and advance the angiocatheter into the vein. Angiocatheter, okay. The small burst of blood in the angiocatheter hub is what medical professionals refer to as a flashback. This lets us know that the angiocatheter is correctly positioned in the patient's vein. While placing a small amount of pressure over the vein to collapse it, remove the needle. This will reduce the amount of blood that may discharge out of the angiocatheter when the needle is removed. I remember learning about that in the hospital once. Now that the needle has been removed, I'll dispose of it in a sharps container. We need to secure the IV with tape and test the line. Great! Now we'll wait a few minutes for the anesthetic to take effect. <laughs> Congo music! One more thing. Since we'll be working in the patient's nose and mouth area, we'll need to make sure he can breathe. Let's insert a breathing tube into one nostril. Uh, glad he's asleep for this. Oh, there it goes. Great job! Our patient is under and breathing. Now we're ready to remove the adenoids. We'll begin by putting an endoscope through our patient's nose so that we can view our work on a monitor. When we reach the back of the oh. nose at the entrance to the throat, we'll be able to see the adenoids. Okay, good. Now we can see the adenoids. We need to open the mouth and get the tongue out of the way so we can begin our procedure. To do that, we'll use a special retractor that opens the mouth depresses the tongue, and locks into position. Oh, this is like a torture device. Great work! We're going to remove the adenoids using a device that uses suction cautery. The device uses electrical pulses to liquefy the adenoid, then suctions oh. the liquefied adenoid out. This method is faster and results in less bleeding. That also sounds terrifying. 
Oh. Okay. Looks like a tube. Oh! To okay, so we have to just keep liquefying. Oh, this isn't nightmare fuel at all. Okay. Whoa. One last piece. Fantastic! The adenoids are gone. Now all we have to do is remove all of our equipment and get our patient to recovery. Our Wait. patient is in recovery, and he'll be able to go home in a few hours once he can breathe easily, cough, and swallow. We'll prescribe some antibiotics, and once he gets home, he needs to drink plenty of water to keep hydrated. He'll also need to stay away from solid foods, but he'll get to eat ice cream, sherbet, popsicles, and jello for a couple of days. He might experience a burned taste in his mouth, which will subside after a couple of days. <laughs> He should brush his teeth often to help alleviate that taste. Scabs might form in the back of his throat from the surgery. And, of course, he should contact his doctor if there's bleeding or excessive pain from where the adenoids were removed. You did a great job today. Try your hand at one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. Okay, so we already did um, a laser tattoo removal and we have the silicone breast implants uh there's quite a bit there's quite a few surgeries we still need to do but that was interesting i don't know what the rest of that was when we remove the adaloids i guess the back of our throats look like really scabby material but anyway thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you later bye